Hi, welcome to Tets Plus. My name is Bob Flisser, and I want to show you some cool features of animation in Microsoft PowerPoint. Now, you may have used some standard animation in PowerPoint, like having objects and text flying in or fading, but what you might not realize is that you can create motion paths. Now, there are pre-made motion paths, like curves and figure eights and bounces, and you can also draw your own custom paths. Now, motion paths are available in any version of PowerPoint in the last 10 years, although the Windows editions have more built-in animations. Also, the motion paths in the Windows 2013 version are easier to manipulate than in any of the other versions. But regardless of whether you're using Windows or Mac or older or newer version, what I show you in this tutorial is going to work on your computer. I think you'll find it helpful. So what I've done is I've created a brand new blank presentation in PowerPoint. And you see by default, PowerPoint gives me a title slide. And I think to make this easier, I want nothing on here. Now you could go and manually delete the placeholders or what I think is a little easier. I'm going to go up here. I'm on the home tab and this is the same in windows or Mac. I'll go to the layout button and from the drop down, I'll choose blank. So now I just have a nice blank screen to work with. And now I'll draw a shape. So I'm still here on the home tab and over here I have all of these shapes. If you're on the Mac, you'll have a little button over here called shape and you can click the drop down and on both windows and Mac, you have some form of this little drop down. You can choose any shape you want. I'm going to go down here and choose a starburst of some sort and I'll just draw this shape here on the screen. If you want to format it, go right ahead. That doesn't really make much difference. So now let's apply some built-in motion paths. Now this is going to be slightly different. The screens will be slightly different between Windows and Mac. I'm going to show you both. Let's start here in Windows. I'm going to go over here to the Animations tab. And you see we have here just kind of standard built-in, like I was saying before, fade and fly in and whatnot. But I'm going to click on this little arrow over here. You see this little down arrow. These little arrows are real easy to miss. So you can see here... We've got this little up arrow, this down arrow, and we have this little down arrow here with a little hat on it. That's the one we want. And when I click it, here you see we have entrance and emphasis effects. What I want to do is go down here, and you see we have some lines, arcs, and a few other built-in ones. And you might think, well, gee, that's really not such a big deal. I thought you said there were so many of them. And we'll get to custom paths a little bit later. What you want to do is click over here, very unobtrusive. It says more motion paths. And now you've got this dialog box, move that out of the way, that has all kinds of motion paths. So this is hidden in a place where you'll really never find it by accident. And this is some of the coolest stuff that PowerPoint has. Now, before choosing any of them, you see down here in the lower left where it says preview effect. Make sure that's checked so you can see preview. So for example, I'll choose diamond. And there's a little preview of that maybe a teardrop, curvy. Now that was going off the left edge. I'll choose bounce right. You could play around with these all day. They're really neat. I kind of like this funnel here. And once you've chosen the animation that you want, just click OK. And now you can actually see the animation path. And this is what's new in the 2013 version is you have kind of this uh, semi-transparent look. Now you could also stretch this out. And when you're playing around with these, you see over here in the upper left corner of the screen, you have this preview button so you can click, so you can get another preview of it. You don't have to wait to get back into that dialog box. So let me just show you briefly how you can get these animations on the Mac. On the Mac, also you want to go to the animation tab and over here on the ribbon bar, you see where it says motion paths. You click that, and now you have these motion paths drop down. So that's what I was saying before, is you just don't have as many of them as you have in Windows, but they're pretty neat for what they are. Also, you see you have this one option called Draw Freeform, and this other one called Draw Scribble. We'll get to those in a little bit. Now, let's say you changed your mind, and maybe I don't want this funnel, I want a different motion path. Well, here's also it's a little different between Windows and Mac. In the Windows version, what you want to do is click the motion path itself, not the object, click the motion path and just delete. I'll press the delete key on the keyboard. And now I could go back 
into that custom motion path dialog. Well, I'll have to select the object first. By the way, another place to go there in addition to hitting this more button is if you click add animation. That also gives you this same drop down and you have more motion paths there. So either way. So now that I've deleted that motion path, I can apply a different one. Maybe I'll choose this bounce right and click OK. Now what I was saying before about the difference between Windows and Mac is that in the Windows version, you really do want to select that motion path first and delete it before applying the new one. The reason is if you don't do that, Windows will apply both motion paths and they will run in sequence. It's probably not what you want. You don't have to worry about that on the Mac version. On the Mac, you only have one motion path at a time. So if you apply a new one, it will automatically delete the original one. And again, if I want, I can stretch this out. I'll drag it out here. And incidentally, you may notice on the beginning, you have this little green triangle. And over here on the ending point, you have that little red triangle. So that's how you know which is the beginning and ending point. So let's go and draw a custom motion path. So again, I'll make sure that I have the path itself selected. Press delete, I have my original shape. Remember, you have to have it selected to apply a motion path. And again, I'll go back up here and scroll down. And this time I'll choose custom path. Now, when you do that, you notice that your mouse pointer becomes this little crosshair. And once again, there's a minor difference between the way you do it on Windows and on the Mac. So let me just show you with Windows first. There's sort of two ways that you can draw. If you want straight line segments, what you do is click, release the mouse button, click, release the mouse button, click. So it's just a whole lot of click, click, click. And then when you're done, double click. So now you have those straight line segments. What if you want sort of smooth segments? Well, I'll just make sure this is selected, press delete, select it again, and go back and apply custom shape. Scroll down, choose custom path. So this time, instead of doing a lot of click, click, clicking, I'm going to press and drag. So maybe I want something like a sine wave. I'll kind of do like that. And again, when I'm done, I have to double click. If I don't double click, you see what happens. This line is just going to follow the mouse pointer all over the place. So you want to make sure to double click. And you notice what happens is that even though I drew down here, because the shape started up here, it followed that path, so the path got shifted. So you might need to drag this around on the page. Now I said that there was a minor difference on the Mac. Let me show you what I mean. On the Mac, again, if you hit that Motion Paths button, this Draw Free Form, that works the same way that the Custom Motion Path works in Windows. What's different here is this item called Draw Scribble. With Draw Scribble, that's really meant to do it the second way I just showed you, of pressing and dragging around. With Draw Scribble, you can't draw more than one straight line segment at once, and also you don't have to double click to end the line. As soon as you lift your finger off the mouse button, the scribbling stops. So on the Mac, Freeform you can use for straight line segments and for smooth curves, and Draw Scribble is only for smooth curves. Other than that, they work pretty much the same way. Okay, so let's say we want to modify the path, and here's where it works pretty much the same way between Windows and Mac, is let's say instead of this shape going from left to right, here let's preview that again, Maybe I want to start it on the right and go to the left. So what you do is you put your mouse pointer on the path itself, and you see the mouse pointer turns to this little four-headed arrow. Click the right mouse button and choose Reverse Path Direction. And now it goes backwards. But here's the best part. What if you want to edit the shape of the path itself? Well, once again, put your mouse pointer back on the path so you have that four-headed arrow. Click the right mouse button. And from the pop-up menu, choose Edit Points. Now you have all of these little dots here. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. And these little dots, these are control points. So you can put your mouse pointer on these control points and move them around. And notice that when I move them around, I have this little 
blue line with a box on the end, these are adjustment handles. If you've ever drawn shapes, let's say in Adobe Illustrator or Freehand or Photoshop, you'll be completely familiar with these as Bezier paths. You could also delete some of these points. Now there's a lot of them here that I probably don't need. So I can go and right click and delete any of these points that I don't want. Now you'll never confuse this for Adobe Illustrator, but it's pretty good for what it does. And of course you could always add a point. If you put your mouse pointer on the line, see now my mouse pointer is again kind of a crosshair. I can right click and add a point. I'll just control Z, command Z and undo that. You could also change what kind of points they are. Let me go back to this one here. Now when I drag this around, you notice, let me scroll up, that when I pull these blue adjustment handles around, this particular point is what's called a corner point. So the part of the curve coming into it can be a different shape and a different angle than the part of the curve coming out of it. If I want that to be smooth, I can right click it and choose smooth point. And now it's smooth. And now look what happens when I adjust, when I move these control handles around it's kind of like a seesaw effect. So let me zoom back out. Actually, I'll hit this button here in the lower right corner and fit. And I'll take this and I'm going to drag this one way out. So I'm, I'll do it with a few of them just to show you that I can make some real major changes to this shape. Delete some of these points here. So I've made a major change here. Now I'll preview it. And you see that, yes, indeed, the motion has changed because the path has changed. And when you're all done editing the path, just click somewhere on the blank slide, somewhere on the background, and you're done. And you could do this not just with these shapes that you draw. You could do this with blocks of text. You could do it with video clips or images that you bring into PowerPoint. Any object that you select, you can move around on a motion path. So you see, PowerPoint has a lot of these really great hidden features that will allow you to draw and modify motion paths. And you see these features are similar to what you find in high-end drawing programs like Adobe Illustrator. The hard part is just remembering where all of these features are. So remember, it's all under the Animation tab, whether you're using Windows or Mac. And in Windows, you remember you click the down arrow on the end of the list of animations here. And on the Mac, you click that Motion Paths button on the ribbon. So I hope you find this helpful for the next presentation you do. Once again, my name is Bob Flisser for Tuts Plus, and thanks a lot for watching.